Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm creating a watercolor galaxy card using the Emmanuel stamp set from Sunshine Stamp Co. I'll be painting with my Kiritaki Gonzai Tombi watercolors, and I will be working on some distressed watercolor cardstock. This is really nice because it's already cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the size of a standard card front. I've gone ahead and taken a pencil and just a jar and lightly sketched in a circle on that piece of cardstock and then I did the same thing on some plain copy paper and cut that out and that's going to be a mask that I'm going to use here. So my watercolor um, is going to be within that circle. So to do my stamping I am using a stamp positioning tool. This one's no longer available but I will link one down below for you. And this is extremely helpful with uh, stamping on a textured cardstock like this because I am going to have to double stamp and with a stamp positioner I can get it lined up exactly where it needs to be and stamp it however many times that I need. And so I'm going to pull the trees from the Emmanuel stamp set and I'm going to be stamping these several times in the bottom portion of this circle. So I have my mask laid down on there. And that way these trees get stamped only within that circle. And I'm going to kind of fuss with where I want them. And then I can just close the door of the stamping tool and it'll pick up those stamps. And then I'm going to be doing some heat embossing with some clear embossing powder. Now this first time around I forgot to use my uh, EK Success powder tool, which I should have done. That just makes it so that the powder only sticks to where you're stamping. But I remember from here on out after this first time. So I've got my Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink. So ink those up and then stamp them down. Um, this portion of the card you are not going to be able to really tell what I'm doing. The ink is clear. The embossing powder is clear. So you can't really see where those trees are ending up. But what this does is it's going to preserve the whiteness of the paper underneath. So when I go in with my watercolors, they will have these white trees down at the bottom there. So I stamped two of those trees. And now I'm going to go in with my Wow Clear Embossing Powder and tap off any excess. And again, it, you are not going to be able to see any of this. It's all white and clear. <laughs> but I'm making sure that I have any extra little bits brushed off. Anywhere where this embossing powder is, is going to resist the watercolor. So I want to make sure that it's only on those trees. And then I'm going to heat up my heat tool really good and bring it to the paper. And I'm going to melt this until it is clear and shiny, which you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll stick this back into my stamp positioning tool and move the trees to a different position and continue this until I get several of those trees stamped at the bottom. And I can change um, how far up into the circle they're positioned so it almost looks like I have more than two uh, different tree stamps just by how I position them at the bottom here. So I'll kind of mess around with it, trying to figure out where I want them. Um, I could have done this with white embossing powder at the end, but this cardstock isn't quite 100% bright white, and so there would have looked different um, than the paper had I embossed with white embossing powder. I know there's going to be people that are going to ask about that. Uh, I wanted it to look like these trees are almost kind of bleeding up into the watercolor from the um, outside of the circle, which you'll be able to see as I keep going here. Here's where I remember to use my EK Success powder tool to <laughs> prep the page. And then I went ahead and stamped several more times off camera. Like I said, you can't see it. But now I'm going to take some liquid masking fluid and mask around the circle. I want to be sure to maintain the circle as I'm watercoloring and I don't want to have to worry about that. So by applying this masking fluid, watercolor will not get outside of where this fluid is. And so I will have a crisp, clean line um, at the end of this time that I'm watercoloring. And that way I'm not having to be finicky about it. So I'm taking a paintbrush that I don't care about. This stuff will tear up your paintbrushes. And I'm just applying that all around the edge of that pencil line. And then I do let that air dry. You don't want to hit that with your heat tool. It kind of makes it weird and it won't come up easy. So I set it aside for about 15 minutes. And now I'm going to go in with my Kiritaki Gonzai Tombi watercolors. I know I've been using my Prima watercolors pretty much exclusive lately. Um, but these particular watercolors are very, very vibrant. And they are almost like a gouache paint. So they're very thick and not as in 
as transparent. And so they are going to work a little bit better for this galaxy than if I use super transparent colors. As I add in this dark blue, you'll be able to see those trees start to resist. So everywhere where that clear embossing powder is, is now resisting the paint and maintaining the color of the paper underneath. And so now you can kind of see how this is coming together. Uh, when you're painting galaxies, it looks like it's going pretty good and then you hit a point where you're like oh this isn't so good keep going <laughs> this galaxies don't really come all the way together until you start adding the stars at the very very end so you just kind of have to chug through it um, remembering that any areas that you want to be light that you need to do that now. So if I was to want white areas in these dark areas later on, it's not gonna happen um, with watercolor. I can pick up some of it, but I want to kind of maintain that light color in that center band where the pink is. So I'm not bringing too much darkness into there. And I am keeping this pretty wet. And so that way I can drop colors in and have them kind of react together, blend together, bleed together. And that's where you get those organic shapes. Uh, here's where I'm going to try adding a little bit of this light blue uh, just to add some more dimension. But I don't love it as I start adding in some of the other colors. But that's okay. As long as it's wet, I can go in with a paper towel and pick that color up and remove it. So you'll see throughout the video here, I'm going to add color, pick up color. Uh, sometimes I'll come in with just a damp, uh, clean paintbrush and scrub color away. And I'm just kind of playing around to get variants of dark areas and light areas and some purples and blues and pinks uh, in this galaxy. And it's really hard to control. It's kind of, I had an idea of what I wanted it to look like starting out and you kind of just have to go with it <laughs> and let the watercolor react and kind of do its own thing. So here's where I'm coming in with just a clean paintbrush and picking up some color, scrubbing out some areas. I, while it's still wet, I can lift some of that color with just my paper towel and just really trying to go for um, some depth and dimension. Occasionally, I'll come in and dry this and then add a second layer of color. I'm very, very careful with my heat tool because I do not want to reactivate that embossing powder because it'll lock in any paint that's sitting on top of it. So I kind of, this took most of the afternoon. I kept would paint a letter, a layer, let it set aside and dry, come back in and paint another layer, let it set and dry, um, just because it had that embossing powder on it. But the nice thing about having the masking fluid around the edge, as you can see, I'm able to maintain that circular shape and I'm not having to be very careful as I hit those edges. I can be kind of messy as I'm doing this. Um, I'm pr primarily just using the purple, the deep blue, a little bit of black, and then that really pretty pink color, and that is it. And just by layering and changing how much water I use changes the look of the color. So it looks like I have a lot more colors in there than I actually do. Here I'm taking that clean brush and picking up and lightening some of that blue down towards the trees. So it's a little bit lighter at the uh, skyline there. And like I said, it's just kind of playing around. It's a lot of fun. You can't be super particular about it as you head into it. <laughs> I'm going back in and scrubbing some areas out. So I'm going to go ahead and just let some music play and let you watch as I finish out the painting portion of this card.
All right, so I went ahead and set that aside to dry on its own um, for, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes or so. Uh, and I wanna make sure that that paint is completely dry and then I can just lightly rub that masking fluid and it pulls right up off of this paper, really easy. I was able to remove it all in one piece, which was really, really nice. And it just, by lightly rubbing with your finger any areas that might get left behind, it comes right up and now you can see I have that crisp line all the way around. And now I'm just taking a dry paper towel and rubbing over the embossing powder on the trees just to remove any paint that might still be on there. And if there's some stubborn areas, I can go in with a clean, just damp brush, scrub the whiteness of the trees and just pick up any paint that might be on there. Like I said, you could do this after you've painted the galaxy, go in with some white embossing powder and stamp the trees after the galaxy, but I wanted to the white to match the white of the card base, so that is why I did it that way. So I've gone ahead and placed my mask back over my card, and here's where I'm going to add in the stars. So that mask is protecting the white part of the card. And I just have some white acrylic paint that I've added a little bit of water to. And I'm just going to start splattering paint on there. And this is where it really gets pulled all together and really starts to look like a galaxy uh, image here. So I'm doing a variety of sizes. And then I can go in and create some bigger stars and kind of manipulate them to get them how I want them to look. I found that it's better to use acrylic paint than white uh, watercolor just because it's a little bit more opaque. So I went ahead and let that sit aside and dry. And then now I'm going to go ahead and attach it to a card base. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card base made out of 110 pound uh, card stock. And I'm taking some foam adhesive just so it has a little bit of dimension up off the base and applying that to the back of the card. There was some warping to this card, so I'm wanting to apply plenty of adhesive. That way it straightens out once I adhere it there. And then I can stick it down on the card base. You could add a sentiment if you wanted to. I'm just gonna leave it just like this, nice and clean and simple, and I can use it for any occasion. And that is it for the card. It's really, really simple, really fun. I hope that you'll give it a try. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions about the process. Be sure to head on over to Sunshine Stamp Co. Check out the stamp sets that they have available over there right now. There are some awesome ones that you can use for Bible journaling and for card making. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.